Because it's the start of a new year, I wanted this video to be the most important and most valuable video that you will see all year. If you watch it through to the end and understand how it all fits together, it will change how you use Excel forever. I'm going to show you the framework for saving huge amounts of time in Excel. If you think you could use this framework, all I ask in return is that you take action the first chance that you get. Have we got a deal? Good, then let's get started. Most Excel solutions that I see follow this pattern. It starts with downloading data from an accounting system or some other system. We then copy and paste that data into another workbook. This is where the real manual work begins. This is where we need to delete rows, fill blanks, update formulas, split columns, merge columns. We need to convert numbers that have come across as text into actual numbers. We need to insert columns to add new dimensions. We need to perform VLOOKUP or XLOOKUP a lot. We then update pivot tables. We then copy and paste that pivot table to another worksheet. At that point, we find out that we've missed a step. We forgot to add a month column. So we need to go back and update the formulas again and then update the pivot tables again and then copy and paste the pivot table into another worksheet again. But it doesn't stop there because we probably have some other data such as a budget and we need to copy and paste that data into the worksheet. And then we need to split columns and add new accounts and categories and update formulas all over again. But it doesn't stop there. We have other information that we need to copy and paste that into the workbook. We might need to remove leading spaces, update formulas and go through these steps over and over again. Finally, when we get to the end, we're finished and we can breathe a sigh of relief. Well, that is until the numbers change or we discover an error. And then we need to start all over again and carry out these same steps all over again. The specific steps undertaken will be different in every situation. Therefore, we have lots and lots of bespoke solutions that contain lots and lots of manual actions and require pages and pages of procedure notes. But there's a blueprint that we teach inside our Excel Academy called the Reporting and Analysis Blueprint, and that solves all of these problems. So let's go and take a look at that blueprint. We're going to start looking at the blueprint at step four, which is the calculate step. Then we'll look at the steps going backwards and then the steps going forwards. When we talk about calculate, this is what most people think about when discussing Excel. Now this could be through formulas, it could be through pivot tables. The challenge is when new data comes in. Unfortunately, we see a lot of people constantly resizing the ranges used in those formulas and pivot tables to take account of that new data. The truth is we don't need to undertake this action of expanding ranges if we put our data into a table because tables automatically expand when new data is added and those pivot tables and formulas also expand automatically to include those new ranges. Therefore, we never need to update a range in Excel ever again. Now, there are lots of people who have adopted tables. Unfortunately, that's where they've stopped. That means they're still copying and pasting data into Excel and then manually reshaping it to add it to the bottom of the table. In our blueprint, this brings us back to step three, which is data. Data is what we use as the inputs for our calculations. Now, it's really important to understand the differences between information layouts and data layouts. Crosstab, for example, is an information layout. If anything has nested headings, it is an information layout. In fact, most of the inputs that we deal with are information layouts. So what are the characteristics of a data layout? Well, each record attribute is contained in a separate column. Each column contains a single data type. Column headers describe the attributes. And if row or column order changes, no meaning is lost. That means we can't sort, we can't group. As soon as we do, it's no longer a data layout and it is an information layout. Now I can't stress this enough how important this is because if we have our inputs in a data layout, we can pretty much do anything we like without complex calculations. Data layouts make formulas easy. However, the issue is our inputs. They are rarely in a perfect data layout. They come in all shapes and sizes and across multiple sources. So how can we get them into the right shape without performing lots of manual actions every single time? Well, this brings us back to step two, which is reshape. 
This is the Power Query tool in Excel. It takes inputs from many different sources, it combines, it cleans, it reshapes, and provides us with the perfect data layout. Then we can load that into a table or a pivot table or into Power Pivot, which means you don't have to copy and paste data between workbooks and you don't have to manually reshape that data. You can let Power Query do all of this work for you. Now I've seen lots of people grasp this, but I've seen those same people manually repoint Power Query to different data sources. The truth is we don't need to do this either. We can create dynamic file paths for our query. All it takes is for us to update a few cells. This then creates a file path that Power Query will then use to pick up that data. That now gets us to step one, which is input. We need to ensure that we use sensible naming conventions to make it easy for Power Query to find the data that it needs and ensure that our file names can be derived using a formula. If we can connect to a database, that's even better. We don't need to worry about those file paths, but if we are using files, we can work with Excel files, CSV files, we can use SharePoint, we can use PDFs, we can use lots of different file types. Once we've created our query, all we need to do is in Excel, click data, refresh all. This will go and get the latest inputs. It will reshape the data into the perfect data layout. It will then load it as a table or a pivot table so that our calculations can update automatically based on that data. We've looked at the first four steps going backwards. Now let's move forwards and look at step five, which is visualize. This is merely creating the individual elements that we want to see for the output. This could be creating charts or tabular layouts such as balance sheets or profit and loss accounts. It could even be creating journals or invoices. We can set these up to be fully dynamic so that when our calculations update, all of our outputs update too. Once we get to step five, this is where we can add value because we can start analyzing the output, asking questions, gaining insight, and we might even need to post adjustments back to that source system. But that's not a problem because these five steps from the refresh, resize, and recalc process. This is 80% of the work that we can achieve simply by saving a file with a sensible file name in the right location and then clicking data refresh all inside Excel. Then if we need to, we can move on to step six, which is present. This is where we collate the multiple items created in the visualize step into a single package. It could be an Excel dashboard. It could be a PowerPoint presentation, or it could be a whole host of other formats. Finally, we get to step seven, which is distribute. This is where we distribute our output to the intended users. This could be via email or it could be saving it in a shared location. We might even send it to a printer and get a physical copy. These last two steps are when we get to reach outside of Excel and work with other applications. Therefore, it's these steps where we might decide that we need to use VBA or Office Scripts and Power Automate to help us interact with those other applications. The beauty of this framework is that if we want to create reports for a new month, all we have to do is save the inputs with a sensible file name in the right location. We then change the parameters to run that report, such as the date, then we can click one button. And in just a few seconds, everything is up to date. All of those manual actions have been completely eradicated. The blueprint by its name is perfect for reporting and data analysis. But what does this include? If we're distributing information or reports to different customers or stakeholders, we can use the blueprint. If we're getting the latest data into a rolling forecast, we can use the blueprint. If we're creating journals for posting into an accounting system, we can use the blueprint. If we're managing the budget and forecast cycles, we can use the blueprint. That's just a few examples. There are loads of scenarios where we undertake these type of actions. Now, initially, this may all seem quite daunting. How are you ever going to implement this? The key is to start small, then snowball. Start on a small task, get that task running efficiently, then move on to a slightly bigger task and get that task running efficiently. As your skills increase, you can tackle bigger and bigger tasks. We've seen that we start with input, which we reshape into a data layout. 
then we calculate on the data and visualize into a format that we can easily understand. Finally, we present the visualizations in a single package and distribute to the intended audience. And that is the blueprint. You don't need an IT team to implement any new software. You can do this yourself using the tools that you already have available. Now, I'm confident that you could take everything that we've looked at in this video and achieve amazing results. But would you prefer to skip out on all that trial and error? Would you like to shortcut the whole process and start making time savings sooner? Would you like to ask questions so you can implement this into your exact scenario? If so, take action. Go and check out our training program. We cover everything you need to implement this framework in any situation. It includes courses, tools, templates, live Q&A, and much, much more to help you reclaim that wasted manual time so you can spend less time at work and more time doing what you love. Just head over to excelthegrid.com and check it out. If you're not convinced that this could work for you, then why not watch this video next? It contains some of this blueprint in action and you can see the type of benefits that we can achieve. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.